At least one staff member at the Royal London Hospital is said to have been caught trying to access Kate's confidential notes while she was a patient and an inquiry has been launched. Well, political commentator Rebecca Ryan is, of course, with us. And we're also joined by royal commentator Rupert Bell. Rupert, explain the scenario. What's gone on? What are the hospitals saying? Has the royal family reacted in any way? We don't know. Uh, I believe in terms of reaction from the royal family, they've been made aware of the inquiries into this alleged possible breach of uh, Kate's medical records while she was in hospital. And so an investigation has been carried out and I believe it may be being referred on uh, as possible criminal investigations because the, it's, you go to any hospital, your private records, your medical records are private and for you alone. And obviously the London Clinic high-profile clinic that it is. It had the king in at the same time as the Princess of Wales and is used to having high-profile uh, patients. Uh, they will view this as very serious indeed. And I think we can all think it is a serious thing because you do not want your um, records being investigated. But clearly, it's all part of the slight feeding frenzy as people trying to find out and get hold of the all-important bit of information ahead of when the Prince and Prince of Wales want to release the information about what it has been wrong with Kate over this uh, over the first few months of this year. Absolutely. I should uh, update uh, this story. Uh, we've just heard that the chief executive of the London Clinic, where the Princess of Wales was treated, has said that, uh, and I quote, all appropriate investigatory, regulatory and disciplinary steps will be taken when looking at alleged data breaches. Uh, we understand uh, that uh, the authorities are looking into this and the police are considering whether or not uh, a criminal investigation is in order. But what does seem to have emerged, Rupert, is that a, at least one member of staff did try to access Kate's medical record. I presume in the mistaken belief that they could be flogged to the media for a lot of money. As I said earlier today, let me tell you, the media would not have touched that with a barge pole. Uh, but uh, very worrying uh, for anyone to know that while they're being treated for a serious condition, someone's trying to nick their medical records. Absolutely, and, but, and particularly in a hospital with a reputation like the London Clinic. Why do you think it's been used over the years, not only probably for its good medical practices, but also because the way it deals with high-profile uh, patients, and as the royal family have been regular, uh, well, not regular, but when there is a problem, they often go to the London Clinic, so they're used to the dealing with that. But there has obviously been, since the moment she went into hospital, this speculation as to what uh, is going on. And it just feels it's someone, uh, maybe some member of staff, has found themselves in a position which they shouldn't have done. They should have known better if that is the case. So it's just another sort of sorry saga of events surrounding what, what has been going on over the past uh, uh, two or three months. And ultimately, what it comes down to, the, prince, uh, the Princess of Wales, her medical privacy is for her and her alone. And it's up to them when they want to release the necessary information as to what is going on. And how they do that, we don't know when they will do it, when they feel it's appropriate. But people trying to find a way and get them through illegal means, well, that's just not on. Yeah, I mean, Kev was absolutely right when he said UK media wouldn't touch such things with a barge pole. The problem I think we have today, living in a sort of global marketplace of information and a lot of fake news, is I'm pretty sure there are foreign publications who would pay top dollar to get the inside scoop on Kate's medical condition because actually the reportage of Kate has been very different outside of the UK to how it's been here, hasn't it? Absolutely. We saw those uh, photographs of her in the car with her mother that were widely available in this country in the end, but were obviously uh, published outside these country. And that's always been the problem for the royal family. It's probably actually the problem for all sorts of people that in the, in the home country, the royal family feel they want to control the narrative. Yet you have seen recently the pictures of Kate and, and William walking at Windsor Farm Shop. Well, obviously, in that case, uh, someone films it and has made money. But I'm told, potentially, the Kensington Palace were made aware of it and didn't actually, in the end, make too much of a fuss about it as they felt it would help clarify some of the, the worst things that's going on. At times, though, even the publication of that video seems to enhance the conspiracy theorists 
to a new level of uh, sort of, I don't know, just to, to a new level, full stop, and uh, all sorts of people agreeing that it's a, a conspiracy theory and it was never them. So this is the problem for Kensington Palace, that it, at times the whole saga feels like a runaway train that's uh, getting out of control. Absolutely. I think uh, the problem with the conspiracy theory syndrome is that we've passed the point of no return. <laughs> Jump the shark. We really had. <laughs> I mean, you know, those pictures... Uh, by the way, that person <clears throat> who took that film, perfectly entitled to do so. Some people have said that perhaps William and Kate weren't that wise to go there. I have a suspicion... They went there deliberately uh, in a bid to get filmed or photographed in order to try and sort of calm the waters and d d disperse some of this nonsense being talked about. But, of course, now we're at the point where everything they do... So, they, they, they if you like, they're filmed, uh, they're happy to be filmed, they're not complaining about that, it was in a public place and all that. And guess what? Immediately all over the world, it's not her, it's a body <laughs> double. I mean, there is nothing they can do oh, now, nothing. I think, Rupert. I keep saying this, I think I've spoken to you about it in the past. I do think that due to these extraordinary, unprecedented circumstances, just a couple of minutes, uh, William and Kate sitting uh, before a camera, chatting happily and saying, come on now, this is silly. Uh, I always said I was going to be out of action until Easter. I'm getting better. You saw me at the farm shop. I'll be back, you know, on the Royal Rota next month. You know, it, it, it would uh, do a world of good, I think. Well, William is very, um, well, strong in, in his, uh, what he believes and that he wants the privacy of his wife absolutely respected, even in the sort of wildness of some of these conspiracy theories. And going to the Windsor Farm Shop, it's a place they visit regularly because their house is just around the co corner from there. So it's not strange for them to be seen there. And many people, probably the staff and everyone, just say, well, it's business as usual. Here they come in after seeing their children play some sport. They pop in to pick up some supper on the way home. And that may be something they do on a regular basis. So I think what we're likely to see is maybe Kate at an Easter service uh, in just over a week's time and, and back on the road in whatever form that takes from April the 17th after the Easter holidays. And it's probably not until then that we'll actually hear what has been the problem with Kate so that they can do it when she's back working, getting on with her job normally again, that then she will feel comfortable to let people know what's going on. But these conspiracy theories... Well, it's it's doing my head in. It seems to must it's probably <laughs> my, doing a few other too, people's Rupert, head in. All as of well. us, all of us. <laughs> Enough with the conspiracy theories.